Hi, how are you doing? Justin here and welcome to uh, BC 107 which is all about how to hold your guitar pick. Now, I recommend that you learn guitar using a pick. You can choose not to use a pick. There are some great guitar players. One of my favorites of all time, Jeff Beck, doesn't use a guitar pick or I mean, I think he started off early but he, he certainly doesn't anymore. Um, Wes Montgomery didn't use a guitar pick. There's lots of guys that mainly do finger style but I would recommend while you're starting out that use a guitar pick. It makes a lot of the really beginnery things kind of easier um, and I think that's important. And then after you finish the beginners course then you can start to decide well hey actually I hate using a pick, I don't like the sound of it or it's easier not to, whatever you like. But I would recommend to start off with that use a pick. So you go to the music shop and you ask for a pick and there's suddenly there's loads of them. So what do you need? What are you looking for? So the type of material that a pick is made out of is really irrelevant. It's just really a matter of preference. I prefer kind of nylon-y sounding picks to plastic picks because to me plastic picks sound a little bit brittle, a little bit hard. But that's just a personal choice. Lots of great guitar players than me use plastic picks, right? So it's not, you know, it really it's just a, pres a, a personal preference. However, when you're starting off as a beginner, there's a couple of things that I think that you ought to be uh, fairly strict with. One is how you hold the pick, which I'm going to go through in a sec. And the second thing is, particularly for these, the first kind of four or five stages, you really want a very thin pick. Thin, thin, thin. Extra thin. Now the one that I use, as I mentioned before, is a Jim Dunlop USA Nylon uh, 0.38 millimeters. I think there's another thickness, but this is definitely the one I like. 0.38. Really, really thin. It's like it's almost like a, playing a piece of paper, right? I'm going to do a close-up on how to hold it in a sec, but that's the one that I'd recommend, really. If you find that too thin, you want to go thicker, I've got my proper, it's a Tortex Dunlop, which is uh, 0.60 millimeters, which is the orange uh, uh, Tortex thing, Dunlop. Um, and they're, they're very good, a, a, a lot thicker. Now, the reason that you want a thin pick to start off with is it kind of forgives you a bit if you press a little bit too hard or a little bit too light it kind of evens things out a little bit so that's why using a thin pick is better they're a little harder to control so as you get a bit better then you might want to use a thicker pick because you can control the end of it a little bit better when you're playing your scales and stuff but using a thin pick is really the um, it's, it's pretty much the way to go um, now some people have before, I'm going to show you, you know, how to hold it in a sec, but um, just a couple of things that other, you know, common questions or whatever. Um, a lot of people find that the pick slips around in their fingers. Now, that's kind of normal. Now what you find is the more that you play, the more you find that you can actually manipulate the pick while you're playing. I never, I, when I first got shown this stuff, I, did, I really didn't believe it, I'll be honest with you. My teacher's going, I don't worry about the pick slipping out, you'll fix it, you know. And I'm going, yeah, but it's spinning around and the fat end is touching the strings. He's going, look, just be cool with it for a bit and, and eventually you'll learn how to turn it around. And now I can kind of turn it around almost to 360 while I'm playing. You know, it's kind of weird. You, your fingers just find a way of manipulating the pick. So don't worry about it too much. It's not a big deal. If you're really, if you're slipping out of your fingers all the time and dropping on the floor, that's a bit more of a hassle. Now, really you want to be holding the pick as light as you can while not letting it fall out of your hand. Um, and I like the feeling of these, the Tortex and nylon ones because I feel like I can grip them a little bit better. If you use the plastic ones, um, a few people, I used to do this when I used the plastic ones back like 10 years ago or whatever. Um, I used to use some um, surf wax. I think sometimes it's called sex wax. I don't know why. Um, there's even one called Gorilla Snot, which I think is really funny. Um, which is a type of uh, uh, wax that people put on their surfboards when they surf to help their feet uh, grip the board and putting a little bit of that on your guitar pick really helps you grip it quite a lot especially if you sweat a lot so you might want to try a bit of surf wax on your guitar pick if you find that you have a lot of trouble with uh, dropping your pick um, so that's really important now um, I'm going to show you now the little close-up and I really strongly strongly recommend that you start holding your pick like this. If you want to hold it another way later on then fair enough people do hold their picks differently to this right but this is a really good standard way to do it and what I really recommend is that you don't under any circumstances hold your pick using anything that one finger and your thumb right there are some well-known great guitar players that use two or three fingers on their guitar picks but it's really really rare and really rare and, and those people are kind of freaky so 
if I was you, might I really think that you should learn to hold the pick the kind of the standard correct way and then only change later on if you've got a really, really good reason why you should change. So let's go to a little close up now and um, I'll show you uh, the how to get the pick in a good way in your fingers. Okay, this is what the pick should look like coming out of your thumb. Notice that it's coming out of the side of your thumb and it's kind of pointing down your finger there. You can see from that side that it's really, it's kind of coming out the end of the finger there and as you flip it over, it's coming out the side of your thumb. It's the side of the thumb that's the most important element. So some people, like back in the old days, they used to get people to do it like this with the, the, the kind of the knuckle of the first finger pointing down with the thumb there. So if I just hold the pick there and move it, it's kind of like that. You'd have the knuckle and then put the pick on the knuckle and then put your thumb over the top. Now, and I really like that way because it makes your hand feel a bit too tight and a bit too closed. The way I'd recommend doing this is making sure that you just point your first finger, put the pick so it's on the point, and then get your thumb closed down so it's just literally your hands nice and relaxed yeah, it can, your fingers can come out they sit wherever they feel like as long as it's relaxed and the pick is coming out the side of your thumb that's the key there is that it's coming out of the side of your thumb because it really wants to be a nice straight line all the way down all the way down here to the guitar you don't want to be having to play like this yeah, with your wrist all bent up you want to try and keep that nice and straight the pick coming right out the side of your thumb. That's the key there, the side of the thumb. Side of the thumb. Side of the thumb. As long as you have the pick coming out of the side of your thumb there, it doesn't really make a big difference on how the rest of your hand sits. I tend to prefer to have my fingers kind of open and loose, the ones that aren't touching the pick, because it just keeps my hand relaxed and for strumming it's really good to be really relaxed. I find that if you keep your hand in a little ball that you're kind of creating all this tension like a fist kind of thing, that's not really such a good idea. But it really is a personal preference. It's not, there's no real hard and fast way to do it. Everyone seems to do it a little bit differently, but that's the important thing. Now also, just as a little note, while you're starting out, make sure that there's no other part of your hand accidentally hitting the strings like the, the knuckles or your, your fingers or the palm of your hand. You may well use those later on to deliberately mute strings, but for now, try and make sure that the only part of your strumming hand that's touching the strings is the pick. Otherwise, you might end up just wearing a bit of skin off your finger and kind of make it a bit uncomfortable for you. So just really concentrate. Pick out the side of your thumb. Make sure the tip of the pick is coming out of the side of your thumb. That's the really big, important bit of this. Um, and then probably keep your finger straight, but it can be twisted around a little bit if you like. Um, I hope that helps you uh, understand how to hold a plectrum and I'll see you for another lesson very soon. We're nearly going to start playing stuff. Can you believe it? Nearly. Not quite. See you soon.